Halloween is coming. Halloween is coming. Halloween is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you love or get excited about Halloween season? Yay! Because I sure am. This is why I started a new challenge, the Digital Pumpkin Carving Challenge. Uh, and this year we are going to do it again. In this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step on how you can use the paintable kit that comes with the challenge to start carving your pumpkin. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link of the challenge in the description of this video. But this video will be a step-by-step -step on how you can start painting your pumpkin. All right, so step number one will be to uh, download the kit. The kit will be given by email to everybody that participate. And once you're gonna receive this, you'll receive this document. And in this document, what you have is a layer with the pumpkin, a few layer with different stencil design sketch that you can start uh, carving from. But if you wanna participate with your own design, your own sketch, your own pumpkin, this is up to you. But if you are a beginner or a newbie, I suggest using the paintable kit. And so once you have chosen one of those design, you'll be ready to start step number two, where we're gonna start carving the pumpkin. All right, for this step, what you wanna think about is where is your light source? In this case, the light source is kind of frontal in front of my pumpkin. And so every carving that I do, I wanna think about the light direction because every object, when it's lit, by a light source basically the theory behind a light theory is to have different values from dark to more bright or more pale depending on the light source when it hits the object so imagine that the light source comes perpendicular to the object that surface is going to be very bright if it's a little bit more as an angle then it's going to be less bright and so that's the only rule that i'm looking at when i'm basically carving the basic shapes right here now if light theory uh, makes your brain go then maybe you should have to revise those basic rules if you make a quick research online doing light theory for digital artists or light theory for artists you'll find plenty of reference online if you want a very well structured course then you can join the digital paint academy i actually created a much all about how to place cast shadow from imagination and understanding the basic light theory. I'll put a link of the academy in the description of this video. Now, step three is all about the details. And this is the place that took me a little bit more time and should take you a little bit more time as well. Once you have the basic understanding of the carving that you did your, your lighting the right way, then it's a question of adding a few details. I know for me, it's all about the edges. I'm looking at the edges of the carving, like the eyes, the corner of the mouth and all of this. And usually a pumpkin after a few days will start to lose its water and just become a little bit form especially on the edge as they come a little bit more dry they would start to basically curl and go inside or outside so to mimic that what i do is i've been changing the value and colors on the edges a little bit if an edge is turning away from the light i'm making it a little bit darker if it's turning towards the light a little bit more bright and pale and this way it's going to add those small details here and there to add some more realism to your pumpkin I'm also keeping on the left of the screen a few reference pictures to help me. There is one of my previous pumpkin. Basically, I'm looking at that to see what I did, did good last year during the challenge. Uh, the rendering should be kind of similar with the same lighting. And then I also have a reference picture for the mushrooms, which I'll add details uh, to. And as well as a reference picture for the lighting that I will add to the end. I want to add a rim light basically uh, so those are the reference pictures that you see to the left for this particular lighting what i like is to have a very bright highlight and a very very crisp cast shadow now the cast shadow i already created it was already there it was great but i want to add a little bit more br brilliance and brightness to this illustration and for this adding a brighter value right where the light will hit it basically a highlight if you didn't know is actually a reflection of the light source so when you're looking at this basically you can think about okay so the light source is hitting this object directly there and that's what you see on this so i'm making sure that that is crisp because it's really going to add a touch of realism 
Now the fourth step could be considered a bonus step. Basically, I wanted to add an extra light source this year. I didn't do it last year, but for this year, I was inspired by the reference picture that I found online. And I was like, you know what? I wanna add this rim light. And it was a ton of fun just to be able to add a rim light will help my pumpkin to have more contrast with the background and therefore make my subject the focal point of this illustration. Now there's only one subject on this illustration, so therefore pretty easy to focus on that focal point. But still, adding that rim light was just a ton of fun and made this illustration look that much more professional. And that's it for this video, special edition for the digital pumpkin carving challenge. If you want to participate, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Go click on it. I'll be sending an email to everybody that register with the kit so you can start all with the same kit. You have some brushes in there as well as the pumpkin. Uh, so you can do that right now. And if you want to brush your uh, lighting theory skills, I'll put a link of the academy in there. Like I was saying, I created a giant, very in detail module about lighting, which will teach you how to create I cast shadow and basically lighting from imagination. I'll put a link in the description. And for the rest, I hope you like this video and I'm looking forward to see you in the next or in the community as well. I'll put a link of that as well in the description. So have a good day, happy painting, and I'll talk to you soon.